So this SSD will simply facilitate faster playback whenever you plug it into the system. Volume B2, which is the name of the drive, and then Resolve Cache. Filmsimplified.com before we start, a quick reminder, we're currently running our Black Friday sale for this year, where you can get an 85% discount on our Ultimate DaVinci Resolve bundle. The bundle includes all of our courses and a lot of extra gifts, like the practice footage library, which includes uh, 500 clips. You also get the full Vivid Pro LED pack. Uh, so you basically get, uh, for a limited time, you get $600 off of our uh, biggest bundle. So just a reminder. How can you use an external storage to make Resolve faster? Well, many years ago, I created a video called the five-step system for smooth playback, which simplified using the Resolve proxy and caching system into easy to use steps for beginners. It worked, but uh, I received hundreds of emails from filmmakers telling me that when they used the system, they ran out of space on their machines. Um, this is due to the way the caching system or the optimization system works in Resolve. So there are basically two ways to make Resolve faster. You either buy a fast and expensive computer, which might not be an option for a lot of uh, filmmakers, especially beginners, or you can sacrifice disk space. So basically you're, it's a trade-off because when Resolve creates the caches and all the extra files that are required to make the playback faster, um, Resolve needs to store these files somewhere. And usually it stores it on the internal uh, storage of, of your computer Computer, which will make you run out of space uh, on your computer fast, so you won't be able, unfortunately, to use this method anymore. The other problem is that the cache doesn't move with you when you move from one machine to another, because as we discussed before, you sometimes you might want to store your project files or an external hard drive and move it like between two computers, for example. Um, Unfortunately, if you create the cache on system A, even though that you will, when you move the hard disk or the storage unit that contains your files into a different system, the caching is stored on the first computer, so on computer A. So computer B does not have, will not have access to these caches, which means that you will either have to suffer from slow playback on the other computer, or you will need to spend a lot of time recreating all these cache files from, you know, from the start. Now, the solution the solution is pretty simple, but I was always hesitant to mention this solution because at the time when I recorded the original video, external SSDs used to be expensive because the problem is that if you're using a mechanical drive to store these caches, you're not accomplishing much because external mechanical drives are slow. So even if you create the caches and store them on this external device, um, unfortunately, retrieving these files, Resolve will have trouble retrieving all these files in time and uh, playback will be slow anyway. This simply means that you need to use an SSD, which at this point I think is becoming more and more affordable. So we will take a look now on how to use an external SSD to make playback faster. The idea is pretty simple. Resolve gives you the option to determine where to save the extra files that it creates in order to uh, facilitate smoother playback. First of all, if you didn't watch the first video and if you don't want to watch the first video, how does this uh, smooth playback work? I'm just going to explain this really fast. Now, let's say you have file A, which is pretty large and very heavy and hard to play on your machine, for example. The solution here is that Resolve will create an extra file. So it will clone this file and create a copy of the, the original file with two main differences. First, the codec or the, the format of the new file will be much easier to play maybe than the original codec. The second thing is that the frame size, so maybe your original file is in 4K or 8K sometimes and your system won't be able to play that. So the cloned file will be, for example, in 720p, not even full HD. Finally, if you're using caching, not proxies, uh, what happens is Resolve can actually bake all the color effects and all the changes you made into the new file. So when it plays the new file, it does your system doesn't need to apply any effects in real time. So when you edit, you edit from the low resolution file, your system runs fast, there's no problem. And once you go into exporting your, your film, now Resolve will switch into the original file and export the full resolution file. It, it's as simple as that. So Resolve allows you to determine where to save these files that Resolve creates. We'll, we'll take a look at an example now on how all of this works. 
So in Resolve, to the bottom right, you have this gear icon. If you click it, these are the settings for your project. And if you scroll down, here you have two sections that determine this process. The first section is the optimized media and render cache section. And here you notice that the first two settings are for proxies and uh, the next two settings are for optimized media. And the final setting is for render cache. So the, in this section, Resolve is simply asking you, when I clone a file, how easy to play should this file be? So basically this is what what Resolve is asking you here. So you can select, like for example, a quarter resolution for the proxy media. You can select the format as we discussed earlier. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I will always uh, select ProRes 422 proxy, which is pretty easy to play on, on, on most Macs. And if you're on a PC, you can select DNX HRLB. So let's just keep this for uh, ProRes proxy. And here you can also select the same settings for the rest of the stuff. So here proxy again, and I will select proxy here one more time. So now we determine what format these cloned files will, will be. However, where will Resolve be saving these files? That's where the next section comes in. So it just shows you the location where it will be saving the proxy files, where it will be saving the cache files, and the proxy will, it will be saving the gallery images. So here I have an SSD. Uh, this is, I'm not sure this was a two or four terabytes. So this SSD will simply facilitate faster playback whenever you plug it into the system. And the nice thing is that this will simply facilitate faster playback, but it will not be required. So if you lose it, if you don't uh, use it anymore, if you only connect the main SSD that has all your files, that will work fine, but Resolve will be slower until you connect this extra SSD. So here I connected the SSD. I'm simply going to right click, create a new folder and call this Resolve cache and let's just hope I spelled cache correctly. So this is the file. Now we need to tell Resolve to use this file. So I'm simply going here to browse and guide Resolve to this file. I'll speed this up. So note here that when we guided Resolve to this file, now Resolve will be saving this extra files it creates. So the caches and stuff into this new file. So here you see the path volume B2, which is the name of the drive and then Resolve cache and then Resolve appended a folder. So it just added a new folder here so proxy media cache clip and dot gallery. Uh, and then I'm going to hit save. And now notice that this folder is empty now. It has no files inside it. However, here on the timeline, I have three clips. So this is clip one. It plays nice with no problems. Clip number two also plays nice. However, clip number three, I added some extra effects that makes it a bit hard to play on the system. Notice that the system cannot play the last clip in real time. The solution is pretty simple. I'll first go to playback, make sure that render cache is set to user. Then I'll right click on this clip and select render cache color output. And now once we have the blue bar, note that now because Resolve created the cache clip, we can get real time playback. So what happened here simply is that when we, uh, ask Resolve to render cache. This is where Resolve cloned the original clip and created like an easier to play uh, copy of the clip that has all the effects baked in and, and is easy to play. And now let's take a look at the file that we originally created. So inside the Resolve cache, there is a file called cache clip now, and there is this folder. This folder represents the cache clip that we just created. So notice that now the caching is saved on the external drive. This will make your life much easier because um, first of all, the cache clips will not uh, fill up your internal storage, uh, essentially slowing your system down. Uh, that's number one. Number two is that even if you do have enough internal storage, unless it's like extremely fast. So if you have like a lot of storage that is extremely fast, you, you don't need this video at all. Your system can totally play this in real time. We're discussing uh, the situations where uh, filmmakers don't have, uh, you know, powerful enough computers with large drives. So even if you do have enough storage on your system, uh, saving caches on an external SSD will speed up your work because now the speed of the external SSD can be dedicated to uh, pulling the cache files and it doesn't need to look for any other files on the system, which will speed up your work. One last thing, notice that we 
changed the settings here or the cache location for this particular project. However, you might want to change this in resolve settings so that all new projects will use the default location, the new default external SSD, so that you won't forget, for example, to change the settings for new projects. However, once we change the default settings, this will affect all new projects, but the existing projects, you will need to go and change these manually. To do that is pretty simple. I'll simply open the DaVinci Resolve menu, go to Preferences, and here you have in the Media Storage section the uh, location for the uh, drive so it's pretty simple i'll simply remove the existing location click here remove then i'll click add navigate to the resolve cache clip and select this location hit save resolve is here simply telling me that these changes will take effect the next time we start resolve and now whenever you create a new project the ssd will be used for caching however uh, there's one caveat here is that if you don't have the SSD connected to the system, uh, Resolve will just throw an error message telling you simply that it can't find caching. So you need to revert the project to uh, whatever caching location you want to use. Maybe you want to go back to using the internal caching or maybe you want to add another SSD. However, just keep that in mind. So I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com. Um, as mentioned earlier, we're currently running our Black Friday deal, which will give you for a limited time uh, $600 of the Ultimate DaVinci Bundle, which includes all of our courses, uh, the uh, full LUT pack, uh, the full footage library with 500 clips and many other gifts. So uh, if you found this helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com.